شيخنا وحبيبنا وطبيب قلوبنا الرسول الأمجد المحمود الأحمد أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المكرمين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, إِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ يَهْدِي لِلَّتِي هِيَ أَقْوَمْ وَيُبَشِّرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجْرًا كَبِيرًا Surely this Quran guides to that which is most upright and gives good news to the believers who do good that they shall have a great reward the Holy Quran in many of its verses in many of its ayat invites us to reflect upon the heavenly signs the brilliant stars the extraordinary differences in their conditions and the systematic order which governs them it encourages meditation concerning the creation of the earth, the creation of the seas, the creation of the mountains, the deserts, the wonderful things in the interior of this earth, the changes of the day and night, the changes of the seasons. It recommends thinking about the wonderful creation of the plants, the order governing them, the creation of the animals, the animal kingdom, the conditions of their environment. It calls for reflection concerning the creation of ourselves, the human beings. And the mysteries and the secrets inherent in its structure. And above all, the Quran tells us to reflect in it, in itself, and see the relationship between the internal world with the exalted uh, heaven. It insisted upon a journey to all parts of this earth and to observe the vestige of those who have gone by and inquire about the stories of human societies and their history and how they lived and take lessons from their life history. So the Quran invites us to a study of natural and mathematical sciences, logical sciences, literature, um, basically all the branches of knowledge that are accessible to uh, humanity, the learning of which is in the interest of humanity and the advancement of humanity and what brings happiness and bliss to human beings. The Quran invites to these branches of knowledge on the condition that people are guided by this knowledge to the truth and know the real world which is headed by godliness. Gary Miller in his uh, book, The Amazing Quran, he mentions a story of a man who lived in Toronto and he was a, a merchant marine. So he made his living in the sea. He lived in the sea, he was a marine. He had a Muslim friend his friend gifted him a copy of the English translation of the meanings of the Holy Quran. This man knew nothing about Islam, did not read about Islam, about the history, about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa wasallam. He had no idea. Uh, but he took this gift, he took this book from his friend, and he went on to the sea. When he came back from his journey, he met his friend again in Toronto. 
And he told him, I have one question for you. Is Muhammad, is your Prophet وسلم, was he a sailor? Did he work in the sea? The man said, no. Actually, Muhammad وسلم, lived in the desert. He never, he might have never seen or never went to the sea. He never had a living in the sea. He wasn't a, a sailor. But he asked him, what's the story? I mean, why are you asking this question? You know, what's the point of this question? He's like, I've read this Quran. But there is one verse that really caught my attention. The description of how a storm is formed in the sea is very, very precise in the Quran. It can only be described by someone who has actually experienced a storm in the sea or has seen it with his own eyes or, you know, uh, he, his living was there. It cannot be done by someone who imagines what a storm would look like. He reflected on verse 40 of Surah An-Nur where Allah says, Mawjum min fawqihi mawjum min fawqihi sahab. A wave. Over it is a wave, over it are clouds. He says that description is very precise because he's this is his job, his living is in the sea. He says, I've seen it numerous times. And this is an exact description of how a storm is formed in the sea. So for sure the one who wrote it either experienced a storm or it has to be the creator of the storm itself is the one who wrote this book. That is why he immediately embraced Islam and said the Shahadatain, just because he reflected upon one verse of the verses of the Quran. The scientific ideas that are expressed in it does not, cannot originate from a man who lived in the desert 1400 years ago this man took his time this man took his time to reflect in one verse of the verses of the Quran and you know he was guided some of our ulamas they say that it is recommended for a reciter they recommend for a reciter of the Quran if one wants to have a fruitful recitation session uh, to focus on three things in sh in, to ensure a productive Quran study session. One is to have a heart that is humble and submissive. Number two is to have a body that is free from the entanglement of work. And number three is to have a place that is free from the presence of others. Whenever a reciter's heart becomes submissive, becomes uh, humble and, sub and submissive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the accursed Satan will distance himself from him. And whenever he isolates himself from his day-to-day -day preoccupations, from his worldly preoccupations and so on, he, his heart will become more receptive to the recitation of the Qur'an more receptive to the light of the Qur'an. And when he selects an isolated, secluded place to recite, to read, he begins to experience the sweetness of this recitation. His soul develops some sort of intimacy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where he experiences this uh, sweetness of conversing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reciting his words and then subsequently you'll notice that the miracles of Qur'an will become manifest for him. So when one wants to study and read the Qur'an and reflect upon its ayat, one needs to uh, actually focus and try to be, make an environment that is quiet and uh, without much disruption so that focus can happen so that one can reflect. 
if one is busy with his daily preoccupations and so on and so forth, then it will be difficult for such a person to reflect upon the ayat of the Holy Quran. Now the Holy Quran is the world of is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the creator and the sustainer of this universe. And these words were sent uh, to the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam through revelation, through wahi. So through the method of wahi and revelation to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam so that mankind would benefit from it. It is a message from Allah to mankind. Therefore it is of utmost importance that one would understand it fully and properly and properly grasp the message that is in the Holy Quran. So in, in tonight's lecture, uh, brothers and sisters, I would like to discuss a few points. The first point is that the Quran is a book of guidance. Second point is there are verses in the Holy Quran which are muhkam, which are decisive, and other verses which are allegorical, mutashaba. So what are these terms and what are the implications of uh, these terms in studying the Quran? And number three, uh, who can interpret and explain the Holy Quran? Inshallah, we will discuss these points after hearing a loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Our fourth Imam, Imam Ali ibn al Hussein, Zain al Abidin alayhi salam, he said, Ayatul Quran, Khazainul Ilm. The verses of the Holy Quran are the treasures of knowledge. Fakullama fatahta khazana, fayanbagi laka an tandura ma fiha. Every time you open a treasure, whenever a treasure is opened, then you have to see what lies in it what are the treasures that is in that chest the holy quran is a book of wisdom and guidance allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself said tilka ayatul kitab al hakim hudan wa rahmatan lil muhsinin these are the verses of the book of wisdom they are a guidance and a mercy to the doers of good Harith al-Hamadani says that one day I came to visit Amir al-Mu'mineen, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, and I said to him, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, when we are in your presence, when we sit around you, we hear words that strengthen our belief. We hear words that makes our faith stronger in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as soon as we depart from you, we hear different words and different ideas which we don't even understand. Harith al-Hamadani seems to be meeting a lot of people. So he used to be, he was a follower of Amir al-Mu'mineen So he used to go to Amir al-Mu'mineen and he used to also go and see uh, many deviant and misguided groups. And they would say different words and different ideas and different uh, you know, uh, 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 issues and deviations were uh, said by them which would confuse him. So he says, whenever I come to you, Ya Amir al muminin all my questions are answered. Everything that is there strengthens my belief in God. But when I leave you and I hear them, I say things, which, I hear things which are, you know, they, I don't really fully understand them. Amir al muminin said, is this what they have done? He said, yes. Imam Ali then said, I hear the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once he said to me that Jibra'il came to him and said, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa there shall be differences in your nation. Inna ummataka mukhtalifatun ba'dak. There shall be differences in your nation after you. Ya Rasulullah. I said, the Prophet said, what is the outlet from it? What is the salvation? How can we uh, be saved from these differences? He said, Jibra'il said, 
the book of Allah, the Holy Quran. In it is all the information of those who were before you and the information and the news of those who are after you and all the rules and regulations that you will face. So notice, Jibra'il told Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the solution to all miseries, the solution to all differences is the book of Allah, is the Holy Quran. However, when we open up the Quran, we notice that there are verses that are what is called decisive, muhkam. Its meanings are clear. It only holds one meaning and the meaning is very clear to everyone. There are no two people who are going to differ on the meaning of this verse. And there are verses that are what we call mutashaba, allegorical. To interpret the Quran correctly, one needs to interpret the allegorical mutashabah verses in the light of the muhkam uh, and decisive verses. Allegorical verses carry implications other than the apparent one, uh, other than the apparent meaning. So it's capable of giving different significations. Let me give an example just to clarify the idea. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يَدُ اللَّهِ فَوْقَ أَيْدِيهِمْ The hand, the literal meaning, the hand of Allah is over their hand. Now one can ask, what is meant by the hand? Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually have a physical hand? Or does it mean something else? Now we, when we want to understand this verse, we need to look at the... Uh, decisive muhkam verses laysa kamithlihi shay there is nothing like his likeness god is not in need of a body not in need of a part he is uh, om, uh, omnipresent and if and if there is a body then that body is present at certain a place in a certain time so he is not in need of a body not in need of space, not in need of a part, not in need of time. He is needless of all that. So it cannot be a literal hand of God. So the meaning of this verse is what? The power, the strength of Allah is over their power and their strength. To understand the Quran fully, one needs to go back to the Holy Prophet wasallam and his successors who he himself appointed, alayhim afdal salati wa salam. They are the ones who know the true interpretation of each and every verse of the Holy Quran. They are the ones who can return what is mutashabah, what is allegorical to the muhkam, to the decisive verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself said, in Surah, surah Al-Imran, Surah number 3, verse 7, وَمَا يَعْلَمُ تَأْوِيلَهُ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَالرَّاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ But none knows its interpretation. None knows the interpretation of the Qur'an except those who are firmly, except Allah and those who are firmly rooted in knowledge. Our sixth Imam, Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, salawatu Allahi wa salamuhu alayhi, uh, when he was doing the tafsir of this ayah, he said, الرَّاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ هُمْ آلُ محمد. The ones who are firmly rooted in knowledge are the progeny, the household of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Which means that only the divine proofs of Allah, which means only the prophets, messengers, and the imams are the ones who know the true interpretation and the true meaning of the Holy Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to follow them. Open up Surah Al-Nisa, Surah number 4, verse 83. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ رَدُّوهُ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ وَإِلَىٰ أُلِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْهُمْ لَعَلِمَهُ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَنْبِطُونَهُ مِنْهُمْ And if they had referred it to the Messenger, صلى الله عليه وآله, and to those in authority among them, then 
uh, those amongst them who can search out the knowledge and it would and uh, the knowledge of it would have known it so the holy quran itself in also another verse tells us and or, or instructs us to follow the ahlul bayt salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhim it has given us the method of how to interpret and understand the holy quran if i want to know the full and complete interpretation of the quran the method has been given by the quran itself allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah an-nahl surah 16 verse 43 he said fas'alu ahla dhikr in kuntum la ta'lamun ask the people of the reminder ask the people of the dhikr if you do not know the question is who are ahlul dhikr who are the people of the reminder that are mentioned in this holy verse al dhikr or the reminder is uh, the holy quran itself allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in surah al hijr inna nahnu nazzalna al dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidh we have surely send down the reminder sorry and we will most surely be its guardian so allah called al quran by the name al dhikr the reminder and also one of the names of the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam for his love sallu ala muhammad wa ali muhammad allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad also one of his names is the reminder our sixth Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salam said um, Al-Dhikru Muhammad wa nahnu ahluhu al-mas'ulun The reminder is Muhammad and we are the uh, uh, household we are his people we are his household who are responsible for its protection and interpretation so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to ask Ahlu al-Dhikr to ask the people of the reminder Allah promised to protect the Quran in the ayah inna nahnu nazzalna dhikr wa inna lahu lahafidhun uh, surely we have sent down the reminder and will most surely be its guardian and the way to protect this holy book from distortion and alteration and um, misinterpretation is by commanding people to follow the people of the reminder the ahlu dhikr the people of the Quran, Ahlul Quran, the people of Muhammad, Ahlul Muhammad, Ahlul Muhammad, the household of the Holy Prophet who are the Ahlul Bayt, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhim. One of the tasks of the Imams alayhim as salam is to protect the religion of Islam and to protect the Quran from change and distortion and misinterpretation. This is why the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in numerous occasions he has reminded people to hold on to both the thaqalain, the two weighty things. When he said, Inni tarikum fikum al thaqalain, kitab Allah wa itrati ahla bayti, ma in tamasaktum bihima lan tadillu ba'di abada. I am leaving behind me two weighty things. The book of Allah and my progeny, the Ahlul Bayt, if you hold on to both of them, if you hold on to both of them, then you will never be misguided. You will never go astray. So we must hold on to both the Quran and the Itra, to both the Quran and the Ahlul Bayt, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhim, to be able to be saved, to be able to count ourselves as true followers of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi, Wasallam. Following one of them is not enough. The word Hasbuna Kitabullah, the book of God is enough for us. This is an incorrect methodology. This is a word that is against the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He said hold on to both of them, not hold on to one of them. So one must uh, hold on to both the Quran and Hadith and understand the Quran in the lights of the Hadith of the Ahlul Bayt salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhim to be able to have a full understanding and grasp the message that is 
sent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for uh, us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who said tilka ayatul kitab al-hakim hudan wa rahmatan lil muhsineen these are the verses of the book of wisdom a guide and a mercy for the doers of good but for me to be guided by the holy quran for me to be eligible to receive that mercy that is promised in this ayah i need to follow the instructions of use I need to uh, learn how to read it the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked me. Not the way that I desire. The way that he himself told me to do it. He himself said, مَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ Take whatever the Holy Prophet has given you and leave and refrain from whatever he has prohibited you or commanded you to stay away from. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam himself said, Aliyun ma'al Qur'an wal Qur'anu ma'ali. In numerous occasions he said, Ali is with the Qur'an and the Qur'an is with Ali. What does this hadith mean? It clearly says that if I want to be guided by the Holy Qur'an, if I want to illuminate my heart with the light of the Holy Qur'an, then I need to go through Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayh. For the truth is always on his side and he's always on the side of the truth. The Prophet himself said, Ali yun ma'al haq wal haqqu ma'ali. Ali is with the truth and the truth is with Ali. Look at this beautiful formula that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam himself gave us. He said in these two hadith, if you want to look at it, Ali yun ma'al Qur'an wal Qur'an ma'ali. Ali is with the Qur'an, the Qur'an is with Ali. Ali yun ma'al haq wal haq ma'ali. Ali is with the truth and the truth is with Ali. It means that Ali is equal to the Qur'an, is equal to the truth. If you want to understand the Qur'an, you need to go through Ali. Just as the Qur'an is a book of guidance, Ali is the imam of guidance. Just as the Qur'an is the book of the truth, Ali is the Imam of the truth. Just as the Quran guides to the truth, Ali is the Imam who guides to the truth. Just as the Quran is a perfect book, Ali is also a sinless, perfect, immaculate Imam. If you want to understand the Quran, then you have to go through Amir al Mu'mineen, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. And the Prophet has said it in numerous, numerous occasions in different ahadith. He once spoke to his faithful companion, Ammar ibn Yasir, where he said to him, Ya Ammar, in ra'ayta aliyan qad salaka wadiya, wa salaka nas wadiyan ghayrah, fasluk ma'a Ali, wa da'i nas, innahu lay yadulluka ala rada, wa lay yukhrijaka min al-huda. O Ammar, if you see Ali walks into a valley, and the people walk into another valley, then go and follow Ali, be with Ali, and leave the people. For Ali will not lead you into falsehood, and he will never take you away from uh, guidance. You will always be guided when you are with Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. The Prophet in numerous occasions said, Ali yun minni wa ana min Ali. Ali is from me, and I am from Ali. A'lamukum Ali. The most knowledgeable amongst you is Ali. Ana Madinatul Ilm wa Aliyun Babuha. I am the city of knowledge and Ali is its door. Faman arada al ilma fal yatihi min babihi. Whoever wants the knowledge, let him come or enter from the door. In another hadith it says, Ana darul hikma wa Aliyun Babuha. I am the house of wisdom. And Ali is its door. فَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَلْيَأْتِهِ مِنْ بَابِ Whoever wants wisdom, let him come or enter through the door. So the path to the knowledge of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. The path to the Qur'an is also Amir al-Mu'mineen salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. For the love of Amir al-Mu'mineen sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad.
in the book Al Khasa'is Al Zainabiya, it is narrated that Sayyida Zainab, Salamullahi alayha, she used to hold sessions in Tafsir Al Quran. She, in her house, and a large group of women used to attend her sessions of Tafsir. One day, Amir al Mu'mineen, Salawatullahi wa Salamu alayhi, he himself entered into the house and listened to what his daughter Zainab was saying. After the class, he went to his daughter and said to her that I heard, I heard today that you're uh, doing the tafsir of the first ayah of Surah Maryam. Kaf, ha, ya, ayn, sad. Sayyidah Zainab said, yes, I was doing the tafsir of it. Amir al muminin at that point said, this is a sign to a calamity that you will face, O, pro o progeny of the messenger of Allah. These letters are signs for what is going to happen to you and to your brother al Hussein in Karbala. Then Amir al muminin Salamullahi Alayh, started narrating the tragedies and the calamities that she will face. So she started weeping loudly. This is one of the last nights of this holy month of Ramadan, the month of mercy, the month of forgiveness. So let us remember the tragedies of Imam al Hussein, alayhi salam, the masaib of Abi Abdullah al Hussein in the last few nights of this holy month. Ya Aba Abdullah. What tragedy should I mention? What tragedy should I cry for? One of the tragedies, Ya Aba Abdullah, that befell on you, this was between you and Sayyida Zainab, Salamullahi alayha. And this tragedy really shatters the heart. It is narrated that Imam al Hussein alayhi salam remained lying on the sand of Karbala for a long while, for a few hours. The Imam Salamullahi Alayhi made a cushion of sand to rest on. But this made some of the enemies think that the Imam was tricking them or has a plot against them. So they said, Inna al Hussein laysa fihi shay. There is nothing wrong with Hussein. There is nothing wrong with him. Others said, when they looked at him, look at him, he is weakened by his wounds. Don't you see how the wounds are affecting him and he cannot fight anymore? So another one said, if you really want to know his situation, إِنَّ الرَّجُلَ غَيُورِ إِذَا أَرَدْتُمْ أَن تَعْرِفُوا حَالَهِ فَهْجِمُوا عَلَى مُخَيَّمِهِ This man is protective of his family. He cares about his family. If you really want to know his state, then go and attack his camp. And you will know his state then. Ajarakum Allah, as Imam al Hussein salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayh was lying on the plains of Karbala, Umar ibn Sa'd and a group of his, and his group, they attacked the camp of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. They frightened the women and the children. Who came out at that moment? Sayyida Zainab Salamullahi alayha. She came out calling out for the Imam. She stood on the hill. She stood on a tell Zainabi. Then she called out with a sad voice that breaks the hearts. Yabna ummi ya Hussein Ya Habibi ya Hussein In kunta hayyam fadrikna Fahadi al-khayl qad hajamat alayna 
If you are alive, then help us. Come to our rescue, for the horsemen have attacked us. وَإِن كُنْتَ مَيْتًا فَأَمْرُنَا وَأَمْرُكَ إِلَى اللَّهِ And if you have passed away, then your case and our case is in the hands of Allah. When Imam al Hussein heard his sister's voice, uh, he stood, but he fell on his blessed face. Uh, he tried standing up again, but he fell again due to the due to the wounds that were on his body. He tried to stand for a third time, uh, but he also fell on his face. Uh, at that moment, he screamed. Oh, Oh, followers of Abu Sufyan's progeny, if you have no faith and you do not fear the day of judgment, at least be free in this world and recall your ancestry if you claim to be Arabs. Shimmer said, what are you saying, O oh son of Fatima? He said, I am the one who is fighting you and the women are not at fault. So long as I am alive, forbid your evil proud thoughts from harassing my woman. Shimmer said, leave the man's woman and start attacking him. The horses and the men directed towards our master, Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Some were striking him with their swords. Others were striking him with their spears. Others were shooting him with arrows. Others were throwing at him rocks. There is another incident in Karbala. It really shatters the hearts. It's when Sayyidah Zainab stood there looking at the body of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. What was the state of the body of Abi Abdullah when she was looking at him from the t from the Tell Zainabi from the hill? She saw a body without a head, a body that is covered with wounds, a body that is covered with spears and arrows, a body that is cut into pieces, his face was smeared with blood, and then she saw the tribe of Al Hur ibn Yazid al Riyahi. They came and said to Umar ibn Sa'd, We want our man, we don't want you to cut his head, we don't want you to sever his head had hour to bury him leave him here so he said to them take him he is yours she saw the tribe of al hur taking the family of hur in a respectful manner taking them away from the battleground my question is who was taking care of the daughters and the children of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa at that moment, she turned towards the city of Medina, towards her grandfather Rasulullah. She said, Assalamu alayka ya jadda. Assalamu alayka ya Rasulullah. Hada Husseinuka bil Ara. This is your Hussein laying here on the plains of Karbala in the open. Doesn't your son have a family to look after him? Doesn't your son have a family to bury him? Isn't there anyone to look after his children and his, his daughters? She turned towards Najaf, towards her father, Amir al Mu'mineen. Then she said, Wa Abata, Wa Aliya, Hadi ibn Tuka غريبة في كربنا Oh father, oh Ali, this is your daughter Zainab. She's a stranger in Karbala, all alone in Karbala, with no helper and no support.
ان لله وانا اليه راجعون وسيعلم الذين ظلموا ال بيت رسول الله اي منقلب ينقلبون والعاقبه للمتقين let us raise our hands in dua اللهم انا نسالك وندعوك باحب الخلق اليك محمد وعلي وفاطمه والحسن والحسين وتسعه المعصومين من ذريه الحسين يا الله والله استن ذري ابييرنس اوف اور ماستر صاحب العصر والزمان ريليف هيم فروم اول هيز وريز ان ستيل هابينس ان هيز هارت Protect him, Ya Allah. Protect all the believers around the globe, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, forgive us for our shortcomings. Forgive us for our sins. We have come here and we truly repent to you, Ya Allah. Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa atubu ilayhi. Oh Allah, heal our sick family members. Heal our sick friends. Heal all the sick believers around the globe, Ya Allah, by the right of the one who was sick in Karbala, our fourth Imam Zain al-Abideen, alayhi salam. O oh Allah, grant us the tawfiq, make us steadfast on the religion of Islam, make us true followers of Amir al-Mu'mineen, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. O oh Allah, answer our needs. If you have a need, ask it right now. With the sincerity that is in your heart, with the blessing of the majlis of Abi Abdullah, inshallah all your needs will be answered. Allahumma qdi hajata kulli muhtaj bijahi bab al-hawaij umm al-baneen wa abniha abil fadl al-abbas alayhim as-salam. يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك O oh Allah, hasten the reappearance of the Imam of our time Grant us the tawfiq to be amongst his sincere servants His sincere supporters and helpers Ya Allah And lastly, let's not forget our deceased family members our deceased community members, all the deceased believers around the globe with the recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha before it a loud, loud salawat. May Allah bless you all. And um, <coughs> inshallah, the programs will continue tom tonight, insh tomorrow night, inshallah, till the day of Eid, inshallah. Then uh, the programs will continue, inshallah. And please don't forget us from your prayers, especially in the last nights and days of the holy month of Ramadan. These are the last days, the last nights of the month of mercy and compassion, the month of blessings and forgiveness. So uh, be earnest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your prayers and supplications. And remember me, remember all the brothers and sisters with your prayers and du'as, inshallah. If there's any question, any comment, any feedback, the floor is open. <laughs>